Controversy has followed the Sunoco Mariner East pipelines, including safety violations, hazardous spills, and an unacceptable danger level to the community. How did Sunoco get approval for the second two pipelines, Mariner East 2 and 2X, and what role did the government play, particularly at the state government and state agency level? Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Do you watch my YouTube channel but haven't subscribed yet? Why not now? It's easy and free. Just click the red button and the bell right beside it and you will be notified of all new content. This is part two of a three-part series. In part one, we discussed the hazardous chemical properties transported in the pipeline and how Sunoco was grandfathered into the rights to Mariner East 1 pipeline. In this episode, we will discuss the role of the state government in obtaining permits for Mariner East 2. Eric, in order for Sunoco to build the second and third pipeline, they needed an easement or right of way over others' property. How did they obtain that? You know what they really needed is they needed the ability to take people's property voluntarily or not. If they didn't obtain somehow, some way, the ability to take your property from you, it was going to be a difficult undertaking for them. So that was the first thing that they concentrated on. And, and the method that they used, to, to summarize it, they relied on very old certificates of public convenience that were issued in the, in the 1930s to the company that built what is now called Mariner East One. They, through a series of transactions, they acquired that company and the Public Utility Commission allowed the transfer of that ancient certificate of public convenience to be transferred to Sunoco. Now, the important thing, I think, for your viewers to understand about these certificates is they were, and still today, are granted on a county-by-county -county basis, and they don't mention a particular project. So Sunoco was able to acquire what I'll just call a certificate of public convenience for the purpose of transporting petroleum products in Delaware County, for example. The courts have found, based on that certificate of public convenience, that Sunoco has the authority to take any property anywhere in Delaware County. And this is what I think people should be concerned about. If they're successful, if they succeed with this, they have quite literally laid claim to every square inch of Delaware County and every square inch of Chester County and every square inch of 15 other counties besides across Pennsylvania. If you add it up, it's something like 40% of, of Pennsylvania that Sunoco has laid claim to based on these ancient certificates of public convenience. There's something wrong with this system. Where was the state in protecting people's rights from this illegal taking or legal taking, which was, is sad to say? Well, you could argue, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I think you could argue that there's something missing here from a due process standpoint when a company says that their right to take your property was granted to them in 1930 and you have no authority, no right to object today because if you wanted to do so, you should have done it then. There's something wrong with that from a due process standpoint, but this is the construct that the government of Pennsylvania has put in place. Describe how it went down. Now, how did Sunoco go about doing this? First, did they apply for the new ones? They, they did. At one point, they did apply for, for new certificates of public convenience for Mariner East too. And a pair of administrative law judges at the Public Utility Commission found that the project didn't comply with the requirements to be granted a certificate of public convenience because of its very obvious uh, export purpose. It wasn't for the benefit of Pennsylvanians. It was an export project. And that's how it was conceived at the beginning. Um, so the 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 pair of ALJs found that the project didn't merit a certificate of public convenience. Sunoco appealed that decision to the full board of commissioners of the PUC, who disagreed, found otherwise, and remanded it back to the ALJs for further proceedings. And at that point, Sunoco withdrew, uh, which meant that there was no final order from the commission that could have been appealed in court. And what Sunoco did instead is to say, we're just going to rely on these 1930s era certificates and we think that that gives us all the authority that we need. Was that challenged? It was. It was challenged multiple times uh, in multiple cases and the courts 
for their part, in particular the, the Common Pleas Courts and, um, and the Commonwealth Court, found in a series of cases that it was okay for Sunoco to take my property or your property or anybody else's property in Delaware County because they had this certificate of public convenience. And the court didn't really examine the method by which it had been acquired. For them, it was just, well, they have a certificate. I guess the PUC thought that was okay. Who are we to quibble with that? And so there was a real, there's a, a real dysfunction or a, a passing of the buck between the PUC and the courts that ended up with neither the PUC nor the courts fully having to take responsibility for the consequences of their combined actions. Let's talk about the breakdown in the governmental role. Do you feel as a homeowner let down by government in that this is being built and that properties are being taken? Absolutely, and, I, and I'll tell you why. I, I think um, having been involved in this for a while, I've concluded that the highest responsibility of government has got to be to reasonably provide for the public safety. If you don't have that, there's not a whole lot else that matters. And um, the government of Pennsylvania has failed at every level to do that most basic function of, of government. Let's discuss the levels. Let's discuss the top level, the executive branch. From what you observed, where has the executive branch and the Wolf administration let you down? Well, the Wolf administration, I don't think there's any question, the Wolf administration has been a facilitator of Sunoco's project from, from, the, day it, uh, from the day it went into office. How? Well, so th the role that they played was, was, first of all, as a cheerleader from the sidelines in, in various media reports. Um, they issued various statements in support of the project, but more importantly than that, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Sunoco required permits to be issued by the Department of Environmental Protection. That's an executive branch agency. And uh, it appears that the governor's office was uh, involved in uh, perhaps directing the issuance of the permits. We don't know. They certainly were involved in the process. And that entire matter is, in fact, under uh, investigation by the Pennsylvania Ethics Commission right now. And it's not, it's not just any ethics, uh, com ethics commission investigation. It is a full investigation, which is fairly rare. So as you may know, the, the Ethics Commission doesn't investigate every complaint that they get. My understanding is they investigate about 20%, about one out of, out of five complaints, proceed to a full investigation. And they only proceed, in my understanding, uh, they only proceed to a full investigation when there's probable cause to believe that uh, the Ethics Act has been violated. And the Department of Environmental Protection, their responsibility is really about environmental concerns, is, but not so much about safety concerns. Is That's correct, but, but the Department of Environmental Protection does have a, a portfolio here to protect the environment, and I would suggest that the permits were improperly issued, and the evidence for that, <laughs> for that assertion is the dozens and dozens and dozens of construction accidents that Sunoco has had for which the department has issued um, numerous notices of violation and trivial fines. But all of this was predictable in advance, right? We're not, the DEP should not be running a pay to pollute scheme. The, the DEP, in my view, should not improperly issue permits and then give, and then when the, when the applicant violates those permits repeatedly, give a token slap on the wrist. There's something wrong with this whole, with this whole construct, the way that the DEP has actually failed at, at the job that it is assigned, which so, is to protect the environment. So how, how severe were the violations in proportion to the fines? Um, in, in my estimation, the violations were utterly predictable. In fact, they were predicted that they would occur if the permits were issued improperly. There was, there was ample evidence that, that Sunoco would be uh, unable to comply with the laws of Pennsylvania. In fact, the DEP at one point temporarily suspended all of the permits and informed Sunoco that it had willfully and egregiously violated permit conditions and the laws of Pennsylvania. And yet, the company was allowed to continue. Are you satisfied with the Public Utility Commission's role in stepping up to protect public safety? I'm not. And, and the PUC is, is an inherently conflicted agency. Its, its, um, its statutory construct requires it to uh, to both 
protect public safety, but also to look out for the interests of the companies that it regulates. And so it's an inherently conflicted agency with a, with a schizophrenic dual mandate. And I don't think that uh, as a result of that dual mandate, it is unable, simply unable, to, to be fully responsible for the public safety, which, is, which should be its most important uh, responsibility. So that's a public policy argument that you're making. You're not really criticizing any particular individual. In, individual. What you're saying is that you set, this is set up to fail to begin with. They're put into an inherent conflict where they really can't do one job completely well. Well, the agency itself has, has a conflicted mandate, but the, but the PUC commissioners themselves are also clearly conflicted. Uh, most of the commissioners have ties, have close ties to the oil and gas industry or to the governor's office or both. And so um, I fear that the commissioners are also not operating uh, independently or without bias as they're supposed to. This has been part two of a three-part series. In the next episode, we will discuss the role local, municipal, and county governments had in facilitating the Sunoco Mariner East 2 pipelines. Thank you.